I play your indie games on itch. Coming up. I make a friend. I collect some gems. I learn about a strange dream. And I drive a car. Friendle by The Shelfman is a game where you have to make new friends and form a relationship group where everyone in the group shares the same values, likes and dislikes. For every 10 friends that join the group, you'll get an update screen showing you how you are doing and giving you stats on who in your group likes and dislikes which particular activities. When you think you have the game in the palm of your hand, a global event happens and now everyone in your group hates pizza all of a sudden. The art is fun and cheery, and I love the bright colours and simple character designs. It's a game that clearly doesn't try to be more than it is. And what it is, is done well, with a decent level of polish. The UI is great, and there is a consistency to design that flows from the menu screen to the credits. The soundtrack is super chilled and really well done, and the sound effects are wonderfully retro. It would be really nice to have a few different songs to listen to, as the one song, as lovely as it is, does get a little repetitive after a while. The gameplay is simple. It's really just matching up, to the best of your memory, the likes and dislikes of your potential new friends group. The random events, such as everyone hating pizza, are great and definitely make things more interesting. It would be great if there were levels to the group. For example, liking pizza and football are great, but what if a certain friend had traits like evil genius, and you could turn your entire group of friends into an evil cult? Or maybe I need to speak to somebody about the thoughts in my brain. I don't know. But what I do know is this game is well made, well polished, and with a little more substance. Could be hugely fun and entertaining. Great game, well made, polished and fun to play, even if just for a short time. Flip Flop by Feature Creep is a wonderfully well polished puzzle platformer. You have a device that can mirror your terrain. Use it to change the landscape, allowing you to generate new platforms and find shards of your broken mirror. Its funny self-deprecating dialogue mixed with its cute and bouncy pixel art will keep you wanting more and more from this game. The game has a great pixel art style, colour palette and oozes with polish, from the bouncy background elements to the squash and stretch on the player character. Nothing has been left out. I really love how the platforms are also animated. There is so much going on that it keeps your attention glued to the screen. Even the cutscenes are well thought out and well made. Great effort all round. The only thing I would say is, the player doesn't half resemble Bomberman. Coincidence, maybe? The game has a great retro chiptune soundtrack, with equally retro sound effects. I love the way the music is muffled when entering the mirrored zone, such a nice touch. The only thing I'd add would be a chipmunk style voiceover when the character is speaking. It's essentially a platformer, but even platformers can be ruined by a horrible handling player character. This game, however, handles like a dream. The character seems well-weighted in the environment and moves responsively. This is a prime example of keeping it simple and making it right, rather than adding too many mechanics at the expense of losing the user experience. The variety in level design is nice, but a small critique would be that it was a little too easy. If this was World 1 of a bigger game, I would say you nailed it, but as the game is short, it should ramp up a little more in terms of a challenge in the later levels. Overall, this game is great. There is no denying it. It's well made, sounds amazing, plays well, and I finished the game and wanted more. Which, in my opinion, is a perfect recipe for a successful game. Before we continue with the video, just a massive thank you and a shout out to my YouTube channel members and Patreon subscribers, Fusel CC, Zan, Retro Galaxy, Fan Van, Jet Simon, Olivia Bernier, Amara Lewis, Enmark Games, Seth Coble, Matt, Tor Alexanderson, Rob, Jarrod Demont, Lighting Cat, Martin K, 60 Plus Game Dev, Yanni Boy, Ty Days, and Luna Harvest. Thanks for supporting the game dev journey and for more information about what's on offer in the Patreon, there's a link in the description. 
I Know You But How is a visual novel consisting of nine chapters that tell the story of Kaylee and her school friend Heather. I actually like the art style, it's playful and lends itself to the dreamy nature of the story. The only thing I would say is that a lot of the shots are repeated, meaning it can get quite repetitive. With a story of this length, I can imagine the time it takes to make all the art, but this is a visual novel and I wouldn't cut any corners in that department. When you're making a game without gameplay, your tools for keeping the player's attention, or reader in this case, are limited to visuals, sound and story. The sound design definitely needs some work. Having one song repeat on loop gets old very, very fast. When the piano music comes in later in the story, it also overlaps the background music, which actually hinders the story. Music needs to complement the story and change depending on the mood. You don't need to narrate the entire story, but sound effects like gasps and footsteps and ambience based on the location of the scene should also be included. There isn't any gameplay as it's a graphic novel, but elements like a page turn animation and sound effects would look great. If you like this type of game, check it out as the story intriguingly intertwines between a selection of characters that'll hold your attention, at least for a little while. The Hooded Olive made a totally accurate car simulator. Tax for short. It's not so much a game as it is a simulator. I guess that's why they call it a car simulator. Yes, I'm that smart. So let's just drive around for a bit and see what we can crash into. But first, let's tune the radio. 